In this video, I'm going to chat about where dimensions come from and then how to apply tolerances. Let's jump right in. I've got a simple assembly here, three parts. We've got this U-shaped part, and then we want to fit two blocks within that part. Now, I know it's painfully simple, but it's a good way to express how this stuff works. Now, I've applied an overall dimension, a dimension on this side of the U, and a dimension on this side of the U. We're only considering left and right dimensions, not up and down dimensions, to make the diagram simpler. Now, we're going to say each block is one inch across. I won't put a tolerance on that, just consider them perfect for now. So we want to know, will these two blocks fit in that assembly at worst case? So what would the worst case be? Let's do a tolerance stack up to figure it out. So the way a tolerance stack up works, we know we need a gap. We know there's got to be clearance. So we're going to pick a spot, and it doesn't really matter where. It could be a gap here, a gap here, or a gap here. And we're going to imagine we shift the parts over. So there's a little gap right there. Now we're going to create a vector loop to see where the tolerances lead us. So in a vector loop, the dimensions must connect, and we must add the tolerances. So let me show you. We'll go from right to left. So this dimension is number one. So from this side of the gap, we go to this dimension. Now the only place we can go is back this way. So this is dimension number two. Now that leads us to this dimension. Now we're going back to the right. Now we've got the dimension on this block and the dimension on this block. That leads us back to the other side of the loop. Now the reason this works is that all the dimensions depend on each other, right? The size of this gap is dependent on all of these dimensions. And we know that because they all connect, right? The vector loop should only lead you to one answer. Now, let's put, this, put it in the stack up. So dimension one, two, three, four. Dimension one, two, three, four, and five. Dimension one, since we're going to the right, we'll call that positive, okay? So we're gonna say plus one inch, plus or minus 20 thousandths. Now, we're going to go to the left. We'll call that negative. So minus 4 inches, plus or minus 20 thousandths. Back across to the right, we're going to add. And then we're going to add. We're going to go 1, 1 to the right. They're both positive. So the arithmetic on this gives us 0. Okay, But, and this is important, the tolerances always add. So it's going to be zero plus or minus 60 thousandths. So at worst case, there could be a negative 60 thousandths gap. That would mean the blocks would not fit in the assembly. There could also be a positive 60 thousandths gap. So sometimes both blocks might fit. Okay. So a couple ways to go about this. We could change the nominals on the dimensions to achieve a clearance at worst case, or we can change the dimensioning scheme. So, if we dimension the U-shape directly where the blocks are going to fit, we're going to end up with less tolerance accumulation. Let me show you why. So, we're starting from this gap. The first dimension is this two inches, and then we come back over. Right, so now this is going to be dimension one, two, and three. Let's apply that to our loop. Now, one inch, or the number one is minus uh, two inches, plus or minus 20. Back to the right, we add these two. We're going to end up with zero, plus or minus 20. Now, it won't fit at worst case. But now it's only 20 thousandths off. So we could change the nominals less to achieve that just by changing the dimensioning scheme. So whenever you're applying dimensions, you want to think about how the thing is going to function with other parts and apply the dimensions directly to features that matter, not indirectly. So the way I did it, the first example was indirect for this assembly. You want to put the dimension on the most important thing and control it directly. Now, 
to make them fit at worst case, all I have to do is change the nominals to 0.99 and this assembly will work correctly. So we would end up with 20 thousandths, plus or minus 20 thousandths, we could have zero clearance or positive 20 thousandths clearance. Now, the last thing I'll mention is that without GD&T, there's gonna be an angular tolerance from the title block on these blocks. So they will fit in the assembly, but they might not touch the bottom with the full face right here. Okay, so it's something you wanna watch out for. I'll make another video where I talk about doing this with GD&T. This should be good enough for now. If you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe uh, leave a comment down below about what more uh, other videos on these kinds of topics you might want to see and i'll make more of these coming soon